Hello, welcome back. It's been a while and um, the Star Blood Stalkers are out and with us and uh, it's kind of about time I built a deck. So uh, let's let's have a look and uh, let's see what we can come up with. People have been after a Seraphon Warband since the game's come out, really. Um, I think it was something that everyone was uh, hoping for. Uh, aesthetically, they look brilliant. Um, and um, fluff-wise, there's so much that they can do with it in terms of, kind of like the, the mechanics and just the style of the Warband too. So uh, a lot of people are very excited about the release of this Warband. Uh, the first Warband in this season where it's not four people as well, which is uh, nice. And uh, they're all the fighters are all really interesting. Um, lots of reviews and things out there um, with regards to kind of the fighters and things. This isn't about that. This is about just um, deck building and uh, what, what I'm going to do to start off with them to see um, if I can if I can get them to work in my own fancy little way. When deck building, you've got to look at kind of the, the strengths of a warband to try and take advantage of that. And um, looking at the fighters, as you can see, um, one, their numbers, uh, two, how quick they are. So um, I want to kind of maybe try and take advantage of uh, the numbers game and the fact that they can scoot around the board like no man's business. So we have uh, four hunters off the bat and everyone apart from Clactrock can go uh, four speed uh, when they inspire. Some of them get the skinks get a little bit quicker uh, going up to five, which you'll be able to see when I kind of go into my deck building and how that is something that I'm going to play, play up, so to speak. So we'll lean into the objectives first. Uh, as I mentioned, I want to take advantage of uh, the fact of how quick these guys are. And uh, at the moment, um, as I um, record this, uh, I can take advantage of that quite nicely. Um, so I will jump in with three of the cards that I've got here. Uh, three surges, gathered momentum, um, cover ground and winged death. All of those based on moving uh, either six or five and um, that is something that can be easily quite done particularly with the kind of ploys and upgrades that I'm putting in and uh, I feel that's three really kind of easy glory to spend so um, for the time being they're a shoe in for me as I uh, kind of lock them in. Next up show of force I can this could potentially be um, restricted soon uh, there's going to be an FAR. I'm pretty certain there's going to be an FAR coming. I think we're all expecting it. And I do, I do think this is going to be on here. Not because maybe it's overly powered, but um, it's in everyone's deck, uh, particularly when people are kind of Voltroning up. And um, a lot of the Warbands have something similar to this in their faction-specific cards as well. So I think it could be restricted. Uh, but for the time being, it isn't. And it's fairly kind of easy for me to score anyway. So where uh, that's going in. Uh, swift Capture. Um, score this immediately after activation if your warband holds one or more objectives in friendly territory and your warband holds one or more objectives in enemy territory. Uh, a dual card, which is going to be quite important as um, we sort of look um, <laughs> later on. And uh, should be quite easy for me to score because of the numbers game, because of how quick I am, and um, because of a kind of few tricks up my sleeve. Next one, a surge, temporary victory, my first restricted card. Uh, score this immediately after an activation if your warband holds three or more objectives. Uh, it's it, it, uh, it probably is a must for these guys because that's how I inspire as well, apart from kind of uh, the big fighter guy. Uh, so, I did toy with not putting this in, but it, it, it makes sense to have this in there for two glory, as it's something that I will be working towards anyway. Next up, we've got a hybrid card, the Great Hunt. Score this in the end phase if one or more friendly fighters each have three or more upgrades, or three or more friendly fighters each have one or more upgrades. I have off the bat four hunters. Um, I can make it five, so it's a shoe in really for, for this warband. The Great Plan, a dual card. Score this in an end phase if you have scored six or more objective cards. 
and you scored one or more surge objective cards, one or more dual, and one or more hybrid. Um, I really like this. Uh, it's it's a. I think a few people kind of with the got put off by the wording of it because it's quite wordy, and you think, oh, do I really have to squeeze all those in? Um, you know, a lot of surges at the minute are hybrid cards anyway. Uh, I think I could. I could maybe put in another dual card, but at the moment I want to see if just having Swift Capture in there works for me. But for three glory and it's not third end phase like Superior Tactician, it is scoring in an end phase. And um, I did play against Valentine of Straight Out of Shades by Fame, and uh, he had this in his hand. Pretty certainly had this in his hand, and he, he scored it in the second round. So it's it is. I think it's a, a really good card. Next up, Will of the Slan. Score this in an end phase if your warband holds one or more objectives in two or more player territories for two points. Um, I think that's quite a good two glory card for for the dinos. It's I think that's going to be quite easy to score. Intimidating display. Now, I, I've, I've looked at this after kind of putting the deck together and I've thought, oh, maybe, maybe this is probably one of the weak links in here. Three or more friendly fighters are in enemy territory. It's the, it's the reason why I've got this card. Um, because of the numbers game. It is a weak link card. I grant you that. And it will potentially be one that gets kind of whipped out, I think. But uh, for the time being, having three... When I have you know, I have ranged weapons, I'm quick. It could be something that I could score quite easily. The Greater Hunt, score this in the end phase if there are more surviving friendly hunters and surviving enemy hunters. I'm pretty certain in terms of fighters, I have more hunters than anyone else anyway as standard. Um, they are squishy as hell though. So, you know, if this card comes out late, it can be a dud. But I'm quite confident that I could score that in most games. And then finally, underdog, uh, because I'm squishy, there may be instances where I do lose the primacy token quite a lot. Uh, so um, having that in there is a little backup to kind of to keep in the fight. Now the gambits, uh, they've got a really kind of interesting bunch of gambits um, themselves. But, but uh, we'll start off with the Asterism cards. Um, they're like their own their versions of cycle ploys. Um, but uh, you basically, they last until the end of the round or until you play another one of them, which cancels it out. So the two that I've put in, the Great Drake, uh, plus one dice to all friendly fighters, range one attack actions, and uh, the Hunter's Steed, plus one move to friendly fighters. I mean, it's kind of obvious why that one's in there because of the amount of glory dependent on the how quick I'm going. Following up on that, tracking's in there. Um, Spectral Wings is in there. And I think that's the only other movement one. Yes. So there's three cards that affect the movement speed of my guys, which I think is going to be kind of more than enough to help me score those um, surges that I've put in. Glorious Triumph. Uh, that's uh, obviously in there to kind of potentially help me score temporary victory and to help me... Um, Inspire my guys. Distraction. Like push someone off an objective when I need to run on there. Burst from the shadows. Choose up to two friendly hunters. Push each chosen fighter up to two hexes. That's so good. Um, you know, you can combine that with the skittish ability where you get to kind of push a fighter at the end of the um opponent's power card phase. <laughs> so um you can you can really kind of control the ball quite easily with that. Uh, Beast Trail, love that card uh, with the amount of hunters that I've got and again, wanting to just get away from people and keeping the kind of skinks alive so they can run around and just kind of be a nuisance. Very good for that. Uh, Lords of Space and Time, very similar to kind of Beast Trail, but instead of an edge hex, it's an opponent's uh, objective which can potentially help me score gather momentum and um, potentially kind of uh, help with the um, the end phase version of that card where I get to glory. 
And my favourite ploy of theirs, uh, Haunty's Device. Pick one. So push one enemy fighter one hex. So uh, a distraction. Or pick an opponent. That player picks three fighters from their warband and pushes each of them one hex. If they have fewer than three surviving fighters, they push each of their surviving fighters one hex. That is really good. Um, so if you just need to push one, fine, push one. But if somebody's standing on all three objectives, they have to they have to do it. They have to push three people. So you can really ruin someone's day with that card. And um I th I think that's really strong, and I think that a lot of people are going to be taking that card. And finally, we drop into the upgrades. Um, again, you'll you'll see there's <laughs> with regards to just hossing around the board, we've got lots of movement pluses. So we got great speed plus one movement, sprinting charm plus one in round one, plus two in round two, minus one move in round three. Uh, Cloak of Feathers, where um, the boss gets plus two to move, but can also run through hex uh, like occupied hexes and ignore lethal damage from lethal hexes. Uh, so that's quite good. I really like that card. And then we have um, Unhesitating, plus one move, plus two if they're a skink. Again, it's fairly obvious why that's in there. And then Proud Runner, I really like this. I in my um, video about primacy, uh, I mentioned that I really wanted to see shenanigans uh, with regards to the primacy token, and um, this is definitely one. Plus one each time this fighter finishes a move action, five or more hexes from where the move action began get the primacy token. At the end of the action phase, if this fighter has no move or charge tokens, discard the primacy token. I I love that card. Just yoink the primacy token away from someone. And from you know not having to kill it to kill anyone and i just think it's really good it it makes the prime it's, it's you know there's lots of cards now that make the primacy not just about killing stuff and wall bands like this like you know like, like skaven or skellies like the high count models low wound count that can, can potentially just bleed out primacy now have ways of being able to kind of d at least disrupt the primacy game a couple of gauntlets, you know, they're in everyone's deck at the moment. Um, so the gauntlet of command, so I get to push a friendly fighter, or the gauntlet of dominance, so I get to push an enemy fighter. So where the reactions are, are there. Um, I wanted to kind of, I just, I just think the gauntlets are really good, and um, at the moment you can take both of them. And then the last three with Heaven Blessed plus one dice and knock back one. Yeah, that's I just wanted to kind of put that in there. I think um add, adding dice to their attacks, I think, is is gonna be quite important for these guys. And uh, Supreme Predator, this one's for Clactrock. This fighter is a hunter, helps out with a few things. Uh this fighter cannot be a quarry. Each enemy fighter is a quarry, and you can reroll one dice in this fighter's attack rolls if the target is a quarry. Excellent. And the last one, Eagle Eye. This fighter is a hunter, and you can reroll attack dice. Is this fighter's attack rolls for range three plus attacks? So the reason I've put that in there um, is just for the reroll on three plus attacks, really, because I think everyone who has a range three plus attack is classed as a hunter. Um, maybe not the boss, actually. So the boss isn't classed as a hunter, so I, I can make the, the boss a hunter if I need to, to kind of help with those hunter scoring cards that I have there. So um, nice and short and sweet. Uh, that's my warband um, deck list for the Star Blood Stalkers. I'm really intrigued as to how it's going to go, really. Um, I played against them twice, and they're, they, they're really fun to play against, that's for sure. Um, I was playing very kind of heavy aggro, and uh, the first game I won. Um, uh, the second game I lost, so I won by two, two glory, and then the second game I lost by um, two glory. And they, we both people scored. They both games, everyone scored 20, 20 plus points. So it's it's going to be very interesting. Um, 
my put my top end my if I was to score all of my um glory I would score seventeen. So maybe I do need to kind of mess around with my end phase cards a little bit. You now intimidating display just kind of sits there. It's, I'm thinking, why have I put that in there? Maybe I need to get rid of get rid of that and maybe get maybe, like potentially get a jewel another jewel card in there perhaps. Um, but we will have to see. Uh, how will I get on with this deck? Well, keep an eye out for a uh, a battle report um, later on in the week, as well as a tournament report because I'm going to be playing these guys in a tournament on. Thursday, hopefully. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, the baby allows. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the comments. Um, am I barking up the wrong tree by focusing on the kind of the, the pace and the numbers? Um, are you kind of using a, a different tactic with the, the Star Blood Stalkers? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments and uh, keep an eye out for, for the rest of the goodies coming later on in the week. Cheers.